in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. This is after the resurrection of Jesus. He's back to life and he's admonishing the disciples finally before his ascension verse 15 and he said to them go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature just keep the scripture there he said to them go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature the interesting thing about this scripture is he did not say go around he didn't say go towards he says go into now if if you are asked to go into a room if you are in that room you shouldn't be seen from where you were sent you should be in immersed in that system if I say go into the lounge I don't expect to see you here again please understand what I'm teaching he says to go into the world and then he says preach now it's very interesting he says preach it means you must find out what he's saying preach the gospel not to men to every creature that means the effect of your going should affect systems not just men preach the gospel the content of your message if it is true and if it's properly communicated must have an effect on both animate and inanimate things as a witness that it is the gospel the gospel was not only designed for men listen very carefully the Bible says for God so loved the world not just men men being the zenith of his creation but not the only creation of his and the Bible says creation was subject to vanity not men so the, the, the liberty that would come is not just to men but to creation keep that scripture there so go ye he's giving an instruction he didn't say discuss he didn't say wait he didn't say deliberate he didn't say have some kind of um, um, political debate go ye enter the system when you are in the system he says preach ensure that everything within that system comes under the influence of your message are we together now revelations chapter 11 please and verse 15 interestingly this is one of the core scriptures for our ministry and the seventh angel sounded and there were voices in heaven help me Kenya saying the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ and he shall reign forever and ever so now we're talking kingdoms we're talking territories are we together now Jesus is giving us an instruction and he's saying to enter a system to familiarize yourself with that system and provide a comp 
compelling dimension of power over that system bring the system under the influence of your message now what we have largely done and that is profitable what we have largely done as the body of Christ is to go around and seek to propose the gospel of salvation to men in hope that they will open up their hearts and receive the life of God. Now that is powerful and for many years we bless the Lord for all of the missionaries who have come from the US, who have come from Europe, you know, and brought this great gospel. We are recipients of that sacrifice. Many of them died in Africa. Their graves continue to stand as a memorial that they spent their lives and gave their all for the gospel. But then we continue to see that there is still trouble because something about our not understanding the instruction of Jesus is not revealing the fullness of his life and his power because he didn't say to go around and talk to men he says to enter a system that meant that we needed to understand the entire scope of the gospel the gospel is very i'm starting very carefully tonight because there's something i want to introduce the gospel has only been received especially in africa as a message that saves and that is very powerful that is very true but that is incomplete there are two dimensions to the gospel the first dimension is the message that saves the message that saves is the revelation of the love of the father the bible declares revealed in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of jesus the son are we together our receiving that gospel will culminate to having what the bible calls the way the life of god this is the gospel of salvation are we together but there is a second dimension to the gospel the gospel as an ideology the gospel as a mind control system the gospel as an instrument for territorial dominion this is the dimension that has seldom been understood and taught so the limit of the gospel for the average african is the impact of the power of god in his heart and that is wonderful but our system and our territories are yet to testify that the reality of this salvation has come twofold one the message that saves and the jurisdiction of that message is the heart of the recipient that once you receive my receiving the gospel my receiving Jesus Christ will not give you salvation it is personal are we together now I can share it by proposing the same gospel but you must believe are we together now but then there is the part of the gospel that we can extend towards a territory the ideology there is the gospel does not stop as a message that saves the gospel extends as an ideology that institutionalizes God within a territory now please listen you have to understand this this apostolic dimension of Christianity has largely not been understood in Africa so we have many Christians sincere Christians well-meaning believers who love God but the territory refuses to bow to the Lordship of Christ and right now darkness continues to loom around the horizon of Africa there have been many Pharaohs who have arisen that do not know Joseph neither do they have regard for the God of Joseph and if we do not balance up our understanding of the gospel and our communication of the same we are not just going to lose money that's a little issue we are not just going to lose positions we are going to lose a generation the side effect the effect of not understanding this truth is that we're going to lose more than material things we're going to lose more than reputation a generation is at stake the ideology 
of the gospel the mind control system of the gospel that means that the effect of the gospel should transcend and move beyond my personal encounter I should bring a territory under the influence of that gospel are we together yes the most uneducated person in Kenya knows coca-cola he didn't have to go to school to know it the influence of coca-cola reached the village and although it's not a software it is something that is hard and real they superimpose the influence of that ideology you would frown and fight any wedding that does not have it represented <laughs> literally you will fight and frown at any it doesn't matter even if people choose to go organic you will still give them the option there when coca-cola is finished in a store you will not get a substitute you will leave and go somewhere else and look for where it is now that exactly listen carefully they have done something to your mind when your phone is missing your mind is disturbed until you find it or buy another one remember the phone may not necessarily talk to you they have connected you to the ideology of that communication you will literally lose your life and your peace because a little metallic object is outside of your influence please understand what i teach your car can be stolen and you can get sad contact the police and say by god's grace but this little object on your hand even if it is missing you are restless you will call it such bend look how far look the look at the skills that you employ in order to restore that object now please i'm going somewhere and i want us to understand this as heavy as it is it has become an instrument of pride you hold it with joy what would have been an embarrassment years ago you hold it with joy it is proof for many of wealth it is proof for many of affluence it is proof for many of enlightenment it is proof for many of being um, part of the realities of a generation i'm just giving an example with that phone when your data is over you are restless you have to find a way of renewing when your credit is finished you will move left right do every kind of thing to put it there now listen to me the gospel was designed to work like that if we have to depend on evangelical meetings alone to save men men will not be saved I'm trying to be as modest as I can be because um, because of what I want to tell you the strategy for kingdom advance in fact the concept of kingdom has hardly been understood by church please listen carefully we have written books we have brought together Bible colleges. We have taught everything from character, which is profitable, the fear of God, ethics of ministry, um, and all kinds of principles of theological exegesis. We understand scripture. We have stretched our intellect from border to border, covered different dimensions, different curriculums, but we have missed the kingdom. And so we have all kinds of people who stand, like I taught in the morning, as witnesses, advocates of the interests of the Father, and they hardly understand his agenda. We have founded churches upon this mistake. We have founded conferences upon this mistake. We have founded Bible schools upon this mistake. Now, this mistake has nothing to do with being good or bad. It is the limitation of our understanding. This is why God is putting conferences like this. Are we together now and so we have a people who are very zealous we have people who love God people who can die for him but isn't it amazing that with all the churches we continue to have in Africa and I'm speaking from a standpoint of love we continue to have churches and branches and our territory has no witness that God is within this place 
it means something must be edited about our spiritual understanding something must be under edited about our approach to kingdom advance the average teenager today in our world and in africa has an outspoken resentment for spiritual things are you isn't it amazing that regardless of cultural barrier the effect is still the same that means someone is winning while we lose and we need to return back to understand the ways of god there is jesus the way the methodology we have to learn his ways the bible says in jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16 to stand in the ancient path and to ask the ancient path is not the path of a denomination the ancient path is god's original strategy are we together now yes And so the concept of church has almost become something that is just a religious experience for many. I am going to church. What does that mean? Ask an average believer to explain what he just said. And you will be surprised how confused he is. And that person is going to be the preacher. What does it mean I am going to church? I'm challenging you for a reason. I am going to church okay what does that mean what should I experience well I'm going to sing I'm going to worship I will hear the Word of God and then leave to what end then they say join me go to the church you say I, I don't have a problem going but what am I going to do there say just keep going it will help you and prepare you for heaven what does that mean the frustration that we have in our Christian experience is proof that something about the ways of God is not understood and you see there are alternatives now this is what makes it dangerous there are alternatives now alternatives that seem to resonate to the frustrations of the average Christian and if we do not do anything about it a time will come let me tell you our pews will not only be empty but history will judge us for not handling this baton well and passing it well i came tonight to open your eyes to a very deep mystery to open your eyes to something that is going on that we are not seeing the ideology of the kingdom the average believer knows nothing about kingdom the average believer knows nothing about kingdom advance it's unfortunate that sometimes even we great men and women of god that love jesus with all our hearts we have all kinds of ideas but the accurate understanding of the strategy allocated for kingdom advance and the strategy that captures a generation for christ is not known we have all kinds of ideas on how it will happen we talk a lot about revival and i believe it i'm a student of revival and i have been used by god here and there to plant those seeds of revival it's an honor he's granted me but i submit to you we don't know what we are saying it is true it's an uncomfortable truth but it is true our results show it we don't know it we have to submit ourselves to the rabbi of the ages we have to in to ask the holy spirit not to come and join us but to lead us because we something is wrong with our understanding spirit of the living god we are not asking you to come and join us in our confusion but to come to clear the air because there is an army that must rise with understanding are we blessed let's talk a bit about kingdom advance is that all right and then we'll pray what does it mean to advance the kingdom the bible says that the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our god and we his christ and he says that we shall reign forever and ever and so what what we have to understand the concept of kingdom advance please write if you're writing let's just do a little bible study king and every scriptural method any and every scriptural method deployed any and every scriptural method deployed 
to enthrone Christ and his purposes first in the hearts of men and then across every strata of human activities this is what we call kingdom advance kingdom advance is not about preaching it's not about singing it's not about doing business we are at liberty within the coordinates of scripture to invent through creativity any strategy at all that can lead to the enthroning of the Christ across the hearts of men and across every strata of human activities listen to me whoever is not doing this today on earth is wasting god's time the deploying the coordinate scripture is our boundary as believers so we are we are given the liberty to walk within the coordinates of scripture and through the ministry of the holy spirit our partnership with him to come up with the various ways are we together now that we can deploy a mind control system that culminates to enthroning christ first in the hearts of men you call it salvation you call it new birth but then across every strata of human activity so when the comedian our dear brother was talking and when the other one was talking and when the woman of god was worshiping in god's mind it is the same he is not interested in the unique method he is interested in the motivation and the power that sponsors it now if you do not understand this we will lose a generation <laughs> the deploying of any and every scriptural strategy scriptural provided is within the coordinates of the word to institutionalize God in the hearts of men and to spread his influence across every strata of human activities this is kingdom advance if that can happen through a church service then the church service is advancing God's kingdom if that can happen through giving birth then giving birth has now become a ministry if that can happen through singing then the singing has become a kingdom advancement strategy if that happens through business then the business so it is not what we do that there is a central motivation that behind everything i do behind the creativity and the excellence and the skill all of the labor is geared towards one goal to see that christ and his purposes are we together now are first planted in the hearts of men and then the influence spreads across what you call the seven mountains please listen to me very carefully we must educate a generation to know why we do what we do not just that we do it kingdom advance every church worker should know this so while you are ushering people in and someone says i'm not interested again your insistence to have him come is not just to gain more membership for a church you are motivated by a higher desire that this man may lose an opportunity to understand something about the kingdom that becomes your basis of doing what you do very well when you prepare and you excel as you minister you are not just motivated by a desire to be famous that will come but the agenda is bigger than fame is too small a reason for god to invest such grace on you now listen very carefully the bible talks about two women the bible talks about two women in
mockery over Hannah. Notice that Hannah continued to go to God and cry for help. But her prayer was not answered because there was no kingdom in it. God could not find a space in her desire where Christ will be glorified and his purposes. Now Hannah, paraphrasing now, went back this time around and said, Lord, I know what you are looking for. You a body, you need bodies that represent your purposes. Can my womb have the honor of bringing one of the bodies? She prayed once, only once. Listen, I have learned from scripture and by experience that the key to getting God's attention is not rolling on the ground. It is the degree to which your life aligns to kingdom come. More than fasting, more than prayer, more than Bible study, the key that causes God to invest his jealousy upon a man and stay there until you rise is the degree to which his kingdom can come through you listen very carefully I have seen that it is not difficult for God to lift the people it is not difficult for God to lift an individual the only issue is what there is nothing kingdom that is represented in our desires it is within his power to make rich it is within his power to grant a man influence. It is within his power to cause a nation and a generation to hear you. But to what degree will his purposes be represented in your pursuit? The difficulty in our Christian experience is, is, is a misrepresentation of God's potential. It looks like God is slack. It looks like God is slow. But the key is that God is vetting the purity of our desires until he finds himself there. You are not going to get his attention. You may cry. God is touched with the feelings of your infirmity, but he's only moved when he finds himself in your agenda. For your glory, I will do anything just to see you. To behold you as my King For your glory I will do anything Just to see you To behold you as my King Wanna be where Gotta be where you are, where you are. Surrendering your heart is not the key to salvation. Believing the gospel and receiving his life is the key to salvation but surrendering your life is the key to be used by God please understand this the condition to be saved condition to be saved is in that the price for all of God is all of you until all of you, not your money, leave your money, leave your car, leave your skill, leave your talent. No. Until you die. It's a realm in the spirit called Galatians 2.20. I have been crucified with Christ. It's a mystery. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ that lives in me. And this life today that I live in the body, I live by the faith. I am motivated by another reality. I have lost touch of my ambitions and my desires. I have brought everything under like a woman submitting to her husband. I have become a bride and a bride indeed. His desire has become my obsession. I do not seek anything for myself. My desire is for him to be glorified. 
John 17 and verse 1 Jesus lifted up his eyes to heaven to pray and he made a statement that was very interesting he says father the hour has come glorify now thy son that thy son that's the formula that's the formula that if I be lifted from the earth I will draw all men to myself and because they cannot see me they will see you who is the object of the sacrifice but when they come to you you are smart enough like an usher to redirect them are we together now pastor and his wife acted my message so beautifully here when pastor ushered his wife gave her an opportunity to share a few things and she turned back and beautifully honored him i said this woman understands kingdom because you see in theology we call it the reflection principle nobody can glorify himself your glory is invested in another and the excellence of what comes out of you is how you are glorified are we together now so the father cannot glorify himself his glory comes from the son the son cannot glorify himself his glory comes from the church in partnership with the holy spirit the church cannot glorify itself the glory of the church comes from his dominion over principalities and powers and creation it's a principle of shared dominion it is the son that glorifies the father it is the church that glorifies the ecclesia that glorifies the son and it is the dominion of the church over creation that is where the glory of the church is so it is important for us to understand that this call to the faith life that we call Christianity is not a journey unto pain and frustration in hope that we'll hear the sound of a trumpet one day that is that is a very well-meaning but destructive ideology it is the kind of ideology that has produced the social economy that we see in Africa is the kind of ideology that has been responsible for the prevailing power of darkness are we together very very important and so we must understand therefore that we are not fully carrying out what we call the Great Commission just because men are getting saved that is one side of the victory but is being cancelled out by the loss of the darkness that looms over a territory there are two keys to kingdom advancement write them down please number one is called evangelism number two is called influence there are two biblical keys there are two biblical keys to stretch ourselves from border to border but here is the other dimension he says but in the last days kapo shale kapo siata, the mountain so the house of the Lord is a mountain on its own and the Bible says it shall be established at the top of other mountains and it shall be exalted above all the hills look at all look at the way this scripture messes with your intelligence do you flow to a mountain can a mountain be placed on other mountains hmm. verse 2 and how many nations many nations shall come when you want to understand this you must study solomon solomon was a man who demonstrated the power of the influence of the kingdom on the excellency of the understanding hearts that he carried solomon compelled the attention of all the kings that were within his sphere but there was a strange woman from ethiopia who would not come because gentiles don't come they come to your light but kings don't come to your light they keep watching they have light too they have results kings come only to the brightness of your rising 
please follow me we have something we have a serious journey to take tonight Sheba continued to hear of the hand of God upon Solomon but it was not compelling enough for her to come she kept watching the same way they are watching you and a time came when Sheba herself had to come and she came with her plenty and the bible tells us theologically speaking for over six months she continued to tour the palace of solomon and at the end of it the bible says she said half of this was not told me she had no breath in her every generation will not be confused there is a generation that will get this thing yes sir I'm going to show you that generation because whoever that generation is we know that they are a chosen people they are a kingdom of priests a peculiar people a holy nation the Bible says that generation you will know that generation by the signature of a body of knowledge they will access called marvelous light you know that this is a generation signified by prophecy by the depth and the degree of spiritual illumination that they have access to the bible calls it marvelous light are we together if we are together please say amen, amen. yes so here we see that kingdom advance is more than just evangelism we will need influence let me talk a bit about influence and i begin to tie some things what is influence influence is the ability to cause a person and a territory to buy into your convictions without using force or cruelty it's called influence the ability to compel men to compel systems to buy into your ideology without using force or cruelty is called influence that means if i sustain an ability to work on your understanding and i to work on your understanding and i come We have done well in evangelism but we must understand the principles that make for influence otherwise a generation will come where god will mean anything are we blessed influence the degree to which i make you believe the degree to which i make you buy into my convictions now listen to me the world operates on mind control systems please write it down mind control systems the world the cosmos operates on mind control systems that means at every given point within a territory there are shapers of a territory's understanding everything about Kenya and everything about Africa is a proposition that came from someone and was received are we together now watch this Satan comes I mean the Bible says that God comes in the cool of the day are we together and he says Adam where are thou and Adam said I heard your voice but I hid because I was naked the next question who told you you have accessed another source of information someone has mediated between me and you we call it media now listen very carefully a system of mediation has come between me and you to communicate something that did not come from me who told you what is the source of that information because clearly you are now under the influence of that information consistently we are immersed in all kinds of informations clamoring for our our connection our emotions now listen very carefully it is why advertisement is powerful business people would tell you they spend millions of dollars for a two three minutes advert what are they seeking to do it's a system a mind control system 
the end of it is to produce an addiction that may be greater than your own control when that happens you have come under the influence of whatever information it is are we together now yeah somebody told you that corruption is profitable you believed it generally i'm speaking not just to you i'm speaking apostolically you received it you taught the children and now it has become an institution someone else taught that being serious with god is equivalent to failing in life you believed it you received it and it's now become the frame of your belief system listen to me the bible says receiving the end of your faith first peter chapter 1 and verse 9 even the salvation of your soul the end the culmination of your faith is not just the salvation of your spirit the reality that has happened to your spirit man must flow over to the realm of your mind there must be a correction here's how the bible puts it philippians chapter 2 paul is speaking to the church in philippi and he starts from verse 5 he says permit this mind to be in you the word let there means permit to permit this mind there was a frame of understanding that made the holy spirit comfortable on jesus remember that at age 12 when his colleagues were there playing around a teenager should not be in the temple learning anything at age 12 but jesus knew that all thing at age 12 but jesus knew that although he was scripture is silent the next time we see him he's 30 years coming to be baptized by jordan and then the heavens open the spirit of god descends upon him and the father says this is my beloved son question what was he before this is now my beloved son in whom i am well pleased and he compels creation to hear him hear ye him and now paul is teaching us that jesus was not just jesus because he was the son of god that he was able to work on his belief systems to sustain an understanding that made him the logos in experience that the father was comfortable to walk through him because his mindset never fought one agenda of god on earth and paul is saying permit this mind to be in you which was also there was a mental disposition that jesus possessed that allowed the Holy Spirit to be comfortable. Listen, impartations are useless when the belief system has not changed. We love impartation, Africa, and impartation is very important. But impartation, you see, the oil will always take the shape of the vessel. If the vessel is small, it will make the oil look small when the prophet was sp speaking with the woman and she said there is nothing except the oil was hearing the conversation and said, you call me small no you limited me in a small vessel and the prophet said go and borrow vessels i know what the problem is don't borrow oil but borrow vessels expand when you expand now the oil will begin to look like the shape and when there was no more vessel the oil stopped listen to me two people can carry the same anointing but their mindsets for instance and respectfully so church history in africa would tell you uh, many anointings that we carry today did not start from us they were anointings that came with our fathers and the patriarchs of faith but either because the men were not educated or they did not have the requisite level of spiritual enlightenment that will allow that dimension of god find expression the anointings on them that we now carry and look great it was always on them but their mindset made it small their mindset made it to look ineffective now now, God walked on us and expanded our understanding and the same grace now is on us and watch the potential of that anointing mind control systems 
a territory can be under siege mindsets and strongholds a mindset is a sustained thinking pattern a mindset is a perspective a mindset is a viewpoint this is very important our beliefs in Africa need to be edited from the lens of scripture not the lens of westernization not the lens uh -uh, uh -uh. the coordinates of growth is scripture for a believer and that from a child thou has known the holy scripture which is able to make you wise unto salvation to make you wise unto salvation no truth does not just bless until it is sequentially arranged truth is like a house you don't put zinc after a foundation and call it house although zinc is required the pattern of building is important there is listen I, I, am i am i uh... now watch this watch this watch this Please let me have two gentlemen, any two, not the ministers, not, yes, any two of you, please come. Let's celebrate them. Please come stand. You stand here, you stand here. Watch this. Now, this brother is born again and is under the influence and the mentorship of Pastor A. Everybody, please look up. And this brother is born again and under the mentorship and influence of Pastor B. Are we together now? Now, this man is properly mentored and taught the ways of the kingdom and his christian experience comes as a report card that he's been properly trained this one is randomly trained in truth but not truth that is coordinated and his christian experience is full of gaps and situations that defy explanation now listen very very carefully there is something you should know about god before you are taught prosperity if you are not taught that and you are taught prosperity it will destroy you sit down there is something about god you must know it is not just any truth the truths have a sequence to build you well so if i get born again and my first message are we together this is what has been happening in Africa. Just because it is truth does not mean it is a blessing. Uh -uh. That's why you must be guided. The Holy Ghost comes to guide us. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Lipa hashi truth has killed many people. They held on to it and it killed them. This man has not been taught the reality of the victory of Christ. He's not been taught the attacks that influence brings. He's not been taught that the cosmos has an adversary. He's not been taught that every open door has an adversary. He's not been trained. Teaching him about growth and influence will kill him. He does not have the spiritual stamina to survive this. Are you getting what I'm saying now? This man is now learning about prosperity but he has not been taught death to the flesh he's not been taught the lordship of christ and he's not been taught the lordship of christ and so he this kingdom owners are rebels we don't own things in this kingdom mm -mm. Oh my God. sit down sit down please ownership is proof of rebellion in this kingdom we are stewards we don't own things and moreover it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful so if god trusts me with 10 million dollars a hundred million dollars the revelation of stewardship has fortified me from lost listen to me this is an apostolic conference and there are many things that we need to bring under divine order that was the goal of writing the first and second corinthians that all things be done decently and in order are we together now yes so imagine respectfully 
that this man now becomes a pastor of a church look at the the depth of deficiency that this man has now remember please i'm not i hope you understand the standpoint from which i'm coming i'm sent to the body and i love the body the goal is never to tear down no i don't destroy the body you will never hear me say any it is the body that i am part of the hallmark of the apostolic ministry is not just signs and wonders it is the ability to capture the speakings of the spirit within a season and to articulate it to a generation so that when men understand they will be able to run the speakings of god through his holy apostles and prophets are like ladders they are like a compass that can bring men back to the boundaries of his grace and power and wisdom this is what we are doing so this man is confused about so many things he's not sure of but now he finds himself as a pastor and he has to teach from the lens of his belief system now watch what will happen to the members because the members will be a reproduction of his mistakes and the mistakes will continue to multiply so you can literally without blinking your eye just look and see the imbalances scattered all over africa which are a product of the lack of the sequential arrangement of truth now you don't have to be fake to be in error you don't have to be fake to be wrong you just have to be imbalanced come he says and i will show you the lamb's wife and he showed me a city that was equal in length equal in breadth equal in height no exaggeration that's the lamb's wife anything that is outside of that coordinate is not the lamb's wife it is for this cause that he gave unto some apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers right like carpenters to mature the saints so that the saints now being matured will do the work of the ministry If we do not correct this there is going to be trouble now remember respectfully speaking this guy suffered in his upbringing this guy suffered in his upbringing so don't to his past and his pain has created a belief system that if not deconstructed and rearranged will be the emphasis of his teaching in ministry are we together yes it is not enough to have truth they must be arranged sequentially then everything that comes from God to us becomes profitable both to us. There are people, the worst thing that happened to them is that they became anointed. Because the background trainings and equippings that should sustain them and sustain the oil was not there. And so when they were anointed, it made them arrogant and impatient. They would not honor people like our fathers like this and say we are all anointed. It's not their fault. They are not fake. They are not wrong. It's a deficiency of the balance, the patterns, a deviation from God's patterns. There are people who teach that when we come to church, we only come to see God. You are right, but you are wrong. God sought for a man and remained helpless until a man came. How dare you think all we come to see is just God? If you say that as describing God's sovereignty, you are right. But you say that as describing kingdom advance, God is helplessly in love with men. He's limited himself that much. Without a man, he remains handicapped as though he were not God. He chose it. So he says, what is man that thou art mindful of? 
Lord, you would, you, would, you would leave man because of his rebellion and turn back from heaven like a man pursuing a woman, seeking her hand in marriage. God is not ashamed to show his vulnerability towards man. He will still come back. I have loved you with an everlasting love and I have drawn you with my loving kindness. The most important thing is God, not men. You are wrong. You are right, but you are wrong. You can sit on a wheelchair for long, although there are men, but one man will come into that building and without raising any song, people are standing from the wheelchair. What was the difference? Remember, God was there. You invited him right from the beginning of the service. So what changed? Not God, a man. From the beginning of the service, we say, Lord, you are welcome. This is your service. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for 